Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Pillars of Eternity 2. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you're supposed to join me today as we sail the Northwestern Seas after we were soundly defeated. I didn't expect this to be a thing. We were soundly defeated in the island that we had been to before. The waters of the dead fire are as flat and translucent as a sheet of stained glass, and a steady wind guides the astute along. The scent of a well-spiced stew rises from below decks. Arena and Vector are perched on the gunwale, legs and fishing poles dangling over the water. Caught myself a real prize t the other day, Arena says. Slipped off my hook, though. I keep telling you to use a bigger one, Vector chuckles. Seem to recall that dark-eyed barkeep in Queen's Birth slipping off my your hook, too. I... I'm sure Irina will land a prize someday. Interesting that we can see her thing already. She's a deckhand. She's never going to be the best deckhand. She's never going to get better than that right now. But let's let's go with that. Irina smirks and laughs. <laughs> Thanks for the vote of confidence, Captain. Not if the fool doesn't invent it. Uh, Vector is saying now. Not if the fool doesn't invest in better tackles, all I'm saying. But Irina has stiffened. You see that? She asks. You look. A dark shape moves under the water. It's almost at the edge of the horizon, but it's rapidly, rapidly approaching. Irina stands. One of Galloway's spawn. It's coming right at us. Uh, well, I am very good at survival. I'm not, actually. Adair is, though. Adair stares out at the shape. I, I think that's a barbed ravager. A barbed ravager, a gargantuan shark known for ramming ships and sinking them. And that's how you use the dash right there. Also, I'm very glad it's not a... a what's the name of that thing? The, a kraken? Yes, I'm super glad it's not a kraken. So we can cast a defensive ward on the ship. Uh, or we can... Yeah, let's try and cast a defensive ward over here. Shodi, circle of protection. With arms spread wide, Shodi chants, weaving defensive magic across the hull. The surfacing beast is about 30 feet of scales, spines, and sinew. It's kind of a big one, but it's not that big. 30 feet is about 10 meters long, so it's like... It's a, it's a van. It's the size of a van, basically. It looks like a, an enormous shark, except for the wicked rows of spines running along its body. Each looks sharp enough to cleave a man in two. That, yeah, that's, that's a problem, though. <laughs> or puncture the hull of a ship. The beast rams you. Oh, boy. Your ship shudders, hurling Vector into the mast. The sailor slides to the deck, unmoving. Oh, no, he got... Yeah, he got injured. Uh, I'm gonna... I can throw a grenade. Can we throw... We should have some explosives. No, we can't, actually. Uh, fire all cannons! Kill the bastard! The deck thunders as your crew rushes to their stations below. Oswald spins the wheel, bringing the port side of the ship around to face the monster just as a plume of water rises from the sea. The surfacing beast is about 30 feet of scales, spines, and sinew. It looks like an enormous shark except for the wicked rows of spines. I read that already. Why are you telling me that? Because this is procedural, I think. Your crew fires off a volley just as the creature comes within range. Water erupts as they shoot, as their shots converge and the beast disappears. After a tense quiet moment, Red froth, rise, froth rises in the roiling water. A mangled carcass surfaces like a nightmare before sinking slowly into the depths. And I lost three ammunition. Below, your cannoneers stamp and cheer. Uh, we gain morale and uh, experience. Okay. And uh, also an injured crew, which is a bit of a problem. Because we have... So let's see. That was... Uh, was it a deckhand? Nope, it was Vector, the cook. Our new cook. That sucks. Well, Berta, go back to the kitchen. I'm sorry. You need to do that. And also, you're going to be injured for five days. That's an extra heal rate right there. Yeah, it should be fine, because, you know, that's actual healing right there. I think it'll be okay. So, yeah, we're, we're trying to turn him into a uh, proper cook right there. Anyway, off we go. Hopefully not to die again. Because that's what happened the, 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 the first time around. I guess not first time around, when we went to the Northwest. Are we losing morale? We're not losing morale. We're actually gaining morale, which is not ideal. I don't want these people thinking they're... No. No, are we gaining... Hmm. Like that. 
Yeah, that's the better one. Yeah, plus one on one side, minus one on the other, and everything is good. Our attack is for zero, which is sort of surprising. You think that, that thing would, would just ruin anybody's morale? It's just like, oh, I need to eat that again. But then again, it's biscuits, so, you know. We have a uh, plagued ship. We've seen these ones before. Uh, it's about also the, yeah, I think this is the same. Or is it? This is far from a shipping lanes. It could be a trap. They might have fancy equipment, Captain, says Rum 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 Dum Rigeri. Just a thought. Hmm, I'm sure Rawatai would repay any help we can offer. Yeah, we're gonna offer. Let's use the spy glasses before. Uh, and a uh, little movement. Yeah, so pull alongside. You're here to help. A pair of enchanted gloves. Okay. What are your people afflicted by? The Rimban <laughs> The captain says, her raspy voice quivering with fear. The bone frost. Oh, this is Rima Gander's work. Um Yeah, there's yeah, we we can give some stuff. Yeah, we can't do much. Yeah. Then we gain morale by by doing that. So interesting thing. And those guys disappear. Such is the fate of um people in the open sea when they catch the plague. Oriokohiki! Oh, we're going to Oriokohiki. We need to go there. Let's just look into our our missions here. Fruitful Alliance! Absolutely we're going there. I kind of want to go there too, though, but, I mean, let's, oh, it's right there. Okay. Oh, and there's things and what all that. It's fantastic. We encountered another ship at sea. Just out of nowhere, because this is a random encounter. You are rounding a rocky islet. I think that's how it's said, because it comes from island, but anyway. When uh, you see a shift drifting on the horizon, its sail luffing in the breeze, a rough symbol has been painted onto it. Oh no, I saw that. You pull out your spyglass and peer at the symbol. It's crudely drawn, but it looks like it could be a war club, or a sword, or a key. Other than the flapping sail and swaying lines, you don't notice any movement. But you do spot one body slumped against the gunwale, and another splayed over the wheel, and an arrow buried in the mast. Aloth appears at your side and looks as well. And in a single episode, we saw that word twice, by the way, and I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's the first time we see that uh, we see that sword, that uh, word, I think. That symbol, he says. It looks like a variant of the Latin Key's insignia. Aloth lowers the spyglass. You think they're Latin Key? Or attacked by them, perhaps? Latin key members rarely announce themselves in such bold fashion, but we won't know until we look, Aloth says. It looks to me like the war club of the Wahiki tribe. Oh, this is the Keo saying. They paint this on raided ships to warn others, I say. He folds his arms and shivers. Perhaps, still, it matters a, merits a closer look. Yeah, yeah, let's investigate, absolutely. My thoughts, precisely, Aloth says. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't give up the... It's one of those occasions where, of course, we're going to investigate. If it were more of a... Oh. More of a sort of thing that we just found. Like a, tour, a, 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 a sunken ship out on the at sea. No, we're actually on the ship right now. Man, those people bob up and down. That's not... That's a little bit too much. <laughs> that's, uh... Yeah, that, that, that goes a little bit up and down too much. And if I turn on fast mode, it doesn't actually change anything, which is good, which is good. Let's see what we have over here. So, they were attacked, but a deer clothing over here. Hmm. Well, there's there's our destination, evidently. Some things, nothing extraordinary. Eloth is uh, st sticking around, because he's going to need the uh, to talk and all that. Because, of course, he has had dealings with the uh, Latin key before. The painting on the mast resembles the symbol used by the Latin key. I don't actually remember seeing this symbol in the first game. Let's have a chat with Aloth. I don't, I don't suppose you found any stray souls. I, kn I know how to play this game, Aloth. Don't do that. A fragment of essence quivers near a corpse. Most of the soul seems to have departed already, but this fretting, fluttering piece remains. It throbs with panic. Even standing this close to it, Ra 
Oh, even standing this close to it raises your pulse. As you let it wash over you, terror thins your blood. Your heartbeat becomes the galloping of hooves. You fight to keep yourself from vomiting with fear, if only to avoid the noise. This was supposed to be a quick trade run, up to Nekataka and out in a, f in a few days. But you got lost in that fog, and the next thing, next thing you know, or knew, arrows were flying through it. So you hid here, between some of the crates, where it's dark, where the screams on deck are just a little quieter. You thought pirates were the greatest danger for merchant ships like yours, but the shrieking warriors butchering your crewmates don't seem like pirates. Did I actually read that one completely? No, I did not. One of them is up in the rigging, painting some kind of symbol on the sails. Light spills into your hiding place. An Almawa warrior, one of the Huani, you think, stands over you. Foreigners shall corrupt our lands no more. You are looking up towards the glare of the and the Almawa silhouetted against it when pain lances through the base of your skull. Well, I guess that's that. Aloth, I did find a thing. Did you find something? Yes. You have that look again. <laughs> I do. They were merchants killed by Huana, who said something about foreigners corrupting their lands. Well, that's a start. I found some unusual stains. I don't think they're blood, but they are rather odorous. He wrinkles his nose at a streak of something the color of a fresh bruise. And apparently I need survival and alchemy to know this. Maybe it's ore? I assume it's ore. Um, or alchemy, I mean. Uh, but I probably should have known that already, because we have been messing with Koiki for a while. There's been a few quests that, that involve that. That's Koiki pulp. So it is. But what would that be doing here? I don't know. The Wahaki tribes smear themselves with the juice of the Koiki before battle. And other occasions. Takeo clears his throat to hide a, a broad grin. I was going to read a good green. <laughs> a good grin. And it would have been fitting as well. Of course. The same group we met on Motario Kozi, as I recall. I've heard they're aggressively isolationist. As for what that has to do with the leaden key... He frowns, looking at the key-like symbol painted onto the sail. At least we know where to look next. Yes, we do. Though if this becomes anything like our encounter in the Defiance Bay catacombs... Well, I hope we get our answers before the bloodbath. Yeah, the, the, that encounter is actually a fundamental, a fundamental point in the uh, storyline. Well, it's not a pivoting point, but it is a fundamental point in the storyline of the first game where you deal with them for the first time, and it's all very... It can all be very disorienting, and you knowing what the heck is called... What is the Leaden Key? Because the Leaden Key is such an imaginative name for a group of people. The Leaden Key is a group of people. They could be called the Shmarmar Shmarmers, and it'd be clearer to understand what's going on. Because... It, although I, I say that, but the secret police of Defiance Bay also has a name that's similar to Shmarmar Shmarmers. And I, for the longest time, I had... To, a lot of trouble figuring out what the heck they were. I had to read them. I, you can read about them in the glossary. I'm not sure if this game has the glossary. Um, I don't actually know if I talked about it in this particular Let's Play. I think I did in the Let's Play of my first oh, of the first game. The Cyclopedia over here, lore. Yeah, so this game, if you haven't played the first one, I suppose it's the same thing. You need to read all these. You absolutely need to re read all these. Uh, well, you don't need to, but it's it, it, it does improve. I, I think it does improve the um, the enjoyment of the game, I would say. But in the first game, you don't the game sort of introduces you a little bit slower. So for the first hour or an hour and a half, and you can you can absolutely not read anything from the cyclopedia and the lore and all that sort of stuff. You don't need to know who the Adiran wars were and um, what the heck Wadewin is or who they were. Because the game tells you, the characters tell you, and that's amazing. And also there's languages over here that I didn't know about. He'll speak. It's an archaic dialect most strongly associated with elves from the rural parts of Aedir, a place that we're never going to go to. And I'm not even sure this is referenced in the game. So, yeah, there's some things that don't matter, but there's other things in here that do matter a lot, especially in regards to the gods. Reading this when you start the first game, reading about the gods is pretty important. Not immediately, but like a few hours into the game, yeah. Absolutely, very important, because that will just allow you to have a bit of a better... Uh, know a little bit better what's going on, even though I am 
uh, I, I'm, I'm definitely at fault for... Uh, I, I'm not I'm not the smartest per person that is, because uh, there was a lot of um, things I missed in the first time two times I played the game, the first game, uh, and uh, yeah, so because I yeah, that it, it it it's it's a relatively opaque writing style in, a, in some regards, not all, uh, specifically in regards to the grand scheme of things, because this the, the I think this. The story of this game is different, but the story of the first game is so much about about the events that don't actually take place during the game that you absolutely need to piece things together. And a single mistake will lead you astray when you're trying to piece things together of what happened before. And there's some characters like Lady Web in particular and Ishvara. Was it Ishvara? I think it was Ishvara. Uh, that that just lay down on you and just tell you a lot of stuff and they're it's very important to learn and to hear what they have to say um, and uh, And and yeah, so they will tell you a lot of things But then there's other characters like Adair for example or the grieving mother that just Tell you their story and it's more about the perspective uh, Of those characters towards the world and that's I think where pillows of eternity is most phenomenal and I think this game definitely is for oh thank you for centering as I ramble, um, where this game is most um, both games are, are most phenomenal in the writing style is that it's just the perspectives of the different characters. Some characters are very simplistic, some characters have very simplistic uh, perspectives, but are complex at the same time. And in that regard, Adair stands out because Adair is a very simple character, but it's a complicated story for him. Whereas, for example, Kana is a very simple character with a, co with a simple story. Um, Sagani, for example, a very simple character with a relatively simple story. It's a very interesting perspective. Sagani is a very endearing character, I find, specifically in... Her attitude is really... I really I really enjoy her. Uh, the Grieving Mother, just phenomenally written. It's just, I love it. Uh, Duran's a hateful, hateful character, uh, but super complicated to understand. Because he's, he's a really hard character. Like, he's a character... I, I'm not even sure I, I I understand him completely. But regarding the event, the events that took place before the first game and before all these games, uh, you're just piecing things together in the first game. So having access to the the little things and knowing all that sort of stuff, to the, to the cyclopedia, I mean, and knowing all of those, is pretty important. Because when you hear things like... She who... Uh, do we have two missions in here? We do. We're gonna need to bring Aleth in here. Yeah, sure. I'll, um... So this is where the Wahaki roost. Don't mind me as I take down our coordinates. I don't mind you. I'll figure you out later. She's also pretty complicated. She's super complex. I, I, I can't understand her. The painting on the post resembles the symbol used by the Latin key, so we are on the right track. We definitely should have Aloth in here. We should have Aloth in here. Let's have Aloth in here. Takeo, you don't mind, do you? I maybe he does actually. There's because there's two quests, so I might have to need to, of two characters. Um, but yeah, so then when they say about the queen who will be. And you're, you're, yeah, I needed, uh, I'm not actually sure. Oh, it's over here. You must be sailing on a ship. Really? Aw. Wait. Oh. How did, what did I click on? <laughs> I clicked on something. Either way, we're good. So here's how we do that. Uh, Maya, you took the coordinates down already. You know what? Actually, we have the autosave. I was before the ramble. I'm gonna go with that one. I'm not gonna bring Maya into here. I'm I'm pretty sure if I, I I don't know if there's an option here. I think that she's just that's just flavor text because it makes sense that she would be working for Rawatai here. She's always working for Rawatai, um, at least as far as I can tell of of right now. So off we go over there and uh, basically go down here and do the same thing that we did before. Um, so yeah, piecing those things together is uh. 
is a is a complicated thing to do. So Elf is in our team. We should be fine. We might need to level him up. We'll see. Maybe not. He does have some spells, so I can just. What's the word? What's the? There's a spell that I really enjoyed playing. The first game it was like a to like he he threw his book at people. Oh, he yeah, he definitely has level up. Does he have that skill? That skill? He does not. Yeah. Level, let's level up a mage then. Um. Takeo is helping. Let's go up on explore explodey his thing. We got our can already. We don't need that. We can have insight. Does anybody have metaphys? We're super dumb. We're just super dumb about all the things. Okay, well, uh, let's see. He's a single class wizard. Minolet is concussive. Yeah, that's basically that. And then that. And I can respect and will respect him eventually. Uh, so I want mechanics. Was I going up? No, I was going up on explosives. Yeah, get some more insight into there. What do we have? Torrent of Flame. So I don't know that it, it exists anymore. The skill where he smashes. It's, uh, it's Book Slam. Grimoire Slam. That's the one. Yeah, it doesn't have it. It used to be just the thing that he had. Call to Slumber. That's kind of good. Let's go with that. Oh, it's... What is... Th why is there a thing? What is that? What does that mean? Are those things that are recommended? I think those are things that are recommend, Or maybe there are things that he has already in his spell book. Oh. That's a nice... That's a nice way of telling me. Which reminds me, the best way to build a mage is just to choose things from here. I'm very smart. I know all the things. Rapid casting. Is that passive? It is. Fantastic. Huh. Maybe building a spellcaster is... Um... I mean, it's complicated. The problem here is... Uh... Like, you definitely want these. Spell resistance. Maybe not that one so much. Weapon summoning spell. Summoning spell. Was that one for... The amount of damage dealt by hit, the critical hits, cast spells over longer range. Uh, what's the other one? No. Got some other things in here. This is the electricity attacks, spell shaping. Sure, let's go with that. Just mess around with things a little bit. Again, not that I'm gonna use him, but just to have him around. Uh, so we have nothing over there. Characters Reflex, he already has some of those. Let's go with Characters Reflex, actually. That's good to just not take some hits to the face. And then get that. So we're very high level. So all this is going to take a, a while. Lasting Empowerment. Accurate Empower. I don't know, that's the uh, Empower spell. It's Metaphysics. It's like d and I don't like that a lot at all. I hate that. <laughs> I hate that so much. They added that in 3.5, I think. Uh, D and D 3.5, and there's just there's a lot of there's a few other rule sets that have it. Of course, this is not D and D. I am aware of that. Uh, so I'll just no. I wanted the thing. Do you not have a thing that adds to accuracy? Unfortunately, you don't. Oh, is that what I think it is? Wall of draining? It is not. What is that? Delight fireball. Let's just get some of those. It's fine. Just sort of messing with his character at this point. And uh, get that. Didn't even read. Okay. Oh, still don't have another one. I don't think he's gonna... Is he gonna unlock another one? He is. What do we have over here? Maximum number of times in power can be used f before resting. That's actually quite good. Yeah, and this is definitely the best one. Although he has it in his grimoire. Which is pretty good. I really enjoy that, uh, that particular, that particular thing, that particular ability, the wall of many colors. It saved me. It saved me against the dragons. Anyway, he's good where he is. Just moving on then. Indeed, I was rambling about things. Symbol. It looks like the one we saw on the abandoned ship. Yes. Yes, it does. And now, finally, we can explore this. 
Okay. That's stealing. Oh, there's a young, a young woman around here. A young woman steps up to the edge of the cliff and peers down wearing an amused grin. She fingers the curve of a long hunting bow. You keep turning up like a chip desada. Nazada is a sea snail native to the Deadfire. The Hoana use their smooth egg-shaped shells as currency. Oh, I didn't see that. Uh, something keeps drawing me back to Oreo Koiki, I say. Takeo winks up at her. <laughs> Don't let Awata hear you say that. You went into the jungle for animal hides, I say, and found yourself in an empty clearing. I did not. Akira, the clearing was empty, I say. You ask no questions. She scowls down at you. You turned around and retraced your steps back to your ship, where it was safe. She picks up her hunting bow and knocks an arrow, pointing it in your direction. Look, I just want to talk. Can we talk? Not if you cannot listen. With a sigh, she points the arrow to the ground. If you came to blunt my teeth with chatter, try to keep it short. <laughs> that expression. I bring an offer of alliance. This is gonna go well. Can I enter? No. You think I stand here for my health? Only the Wahaki are allowed on Oreo Kowiki. I'd like to speak with your chieftain. You have an audience with me. Ruasare doesn't waste time on outsider vagrants. Well, I'll. This is going to be bluff. Okay. I seek a deeper understanding of your tribe. The way her hand drops to her belt, she either doesn't understand or doesn't like the sound of your words. Takeo greens and pats down a nest of his writhing hair. Deeper? Deeper how? Kipeha, that's her name apparently. I didn't, she didn't introduce herself. She squints at you. I want to know about the people who survived the cataclysm of old. She nods slowly, her expression guarded. There are many eyes on you, outsider. Use your time in Oreo Koiki wisely. Rasare will be expecting you inside. She gestures for one of the cliffside guards to lower the lift. Seeing as you've earned your way up from nuisance to guest, find me if you feel like trading. Kipea folds her arms and strolls away from the cliffside. Well, that was an interesting interchange. And also that explains why it was... Why it is stealing. Of course, I'm going to take everything because, you know, no gameplay consequences. Also, I have no need of those, but I will still take everything. Then why did I go over there? Was it... Nah, just my instinct, I suppose. Real quiet. Of not coming over here. It's a lot of salt and fish. Makes sense. Sorry about that little cut. They're pretty inland. This I'll is uh see what I can find. This is in like hidden. Even people who would come over here. That's why she was saying about you found you came to a clearing and it was empty. And uh Yeah, I can see I can see th that being the experience of a lot of people just coming in here and not finding them. Although once you see these things you would find them for sure. Oh, this is the other way of getting in if you... I imagine it is the other way of getting in. A cliff. Let's not get in through there. And in fact, let's get in next episode. So let's not get in this episode at all. So for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Pillars of Eternity 2. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, I'll go ahead... see what I can find. Go ahead and leave a comment, like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.